everyone, Rich Mays Lopez. And I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor, soul collector. And this is Full Size Run Show, the world's best sneaker podcast, uh, live stream, and YouTube video series ever. That's right. However you want to consume it, we are on all those different and it's the channels. Best. It's the best and, uh, we're the best on, yeah, I would say uh, every single one. Period. Uh, we are coming to you live after the July 4th weekend. Happy belated B-Day to my brother, Brendan Dunn, Thank by you. the way. Thank you, Rich. Since we're a little bit over the halfway point of the year, B. Diddy, we have something special for the people today. That's right. We are going to break down our best sneakers of the year so far. So far. So far. Yeah, obviously there's a there's a lot that's left to happen in 2017, yeah. and we're looking forward to seeing what else is coming. But you know we're we're at the halfway mark, and because of that, we are gonna you know take a look at, at five shoes that we decided amongst the Soul Collector staff were yep. the best. I know we disagree on some of them, so there's definitely yep. room to talk about that. The Soul Collector staff is definitely an eclectic group of sneaker heads whose tastes range uh, within the whole spectrum of sneakers. So yeah. our top five as a collective. Will be presented later on, but first, be Diddy, the new section, kick us off. Um, let's talk about Kanye West, let's. as we often do. Spotted in an interesting pair of sneakers over the weekend, so he was practicing with the UCL Bruin, yep. UCLA Bruins team for for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe he's trying out. <laughs> Two Chains was there as well, uh, probably the more accomplished basketball player of that duo of rappers. Uh, the interesting thing here was Kanye West sneakers. Um, anytime Kanye West wears something that we've anything. never, n yeah, anything, but especially <laughs> if we've never seen it before, it's worth uh, noting. This time it looks like it. It looks kind of like the Yeezy Runner as a yeah. mid. We're thinking maybe this is the first Yeezy basketball shoe, which yeah. has been rumored for a while yeah. now. Not a lot of info, but. Kanye West doesn't wear too much if it too much outside of his own designs. You yeah, know? yeah. We don't know if it's a full-fledged basketball sneaker or some kind of adaptation of what already exists. Right. And again, we don't even know if it's an easy shoe. What, I guess what the takeaway here is for me personally is that Kanye West has spoken about his desire to design sneakers outside of his lifestyle range of stuff, right. which is the Boost and the Calabasas, and more performance stuff. Uh, which would be, in this case, a basketball performance sneaker. Uh, he wanted to design uniforms for, at first, high school teams in Chicago, right. and now it's uh, in Calabasas. It's happening Calabasas school. Right. right. So is this a look into the future? Potentially, we don't know, but I am absolutely all here for Kanye West basketball sneakers. Rich, let's talk about the other most important sneakers uh, in the scene right in now. In the world. One LeVar of our and topics. Lonzo Ball, Zoe 2s. I would go so far as to say that they have had the same effect in sneaker culture as Kanye West You're has putting them up there at already. this point. Yeah. In serious news, if you can call it serious, uh, LeVar Ball, Lonzo Ball unveiled three Independence Day colorways of the Zoe 2 over the Independence Day weekend. Uh, bearing the red, white, and blue of Some America. Some incredible storytelling here. Very, very <laughs> nuanced. Very nuanced approach to the. I don't. What, were they, what do you think they were going for here with yeah, the whole red, white, and blue? Can't theme? quite suss it out. I will say subtle though, as always from the Ball family. <laughs> the, just like the imaginary Zo twos that have been unveiled already, mm -hmm. uh, these will also not release <laughs> until November, and the retail price is four ninety five. But but it's always it's always the right time of year to celebrate the birth of America. So while they while they will that's arrive true. well after July fourth, that, that's true. Um, you know, you can celebrate Thanksgiving. There's with nothing them. wrong with patriotism in November. Lonzo Ball went from one uh, mysterious signature sneaker, the first one that they unveiled, mm -hmm. to three because he had the two Lakers colorways, and mm -hmm. now, like you said, they're doing storytelling. Like he went from one sneaker to packs of sneakers to to storytelling sneakers. I'm here for it. I'm here for anything Lonzo Ball, first of all, period, and I'm happy to see it. I, you know what? I just, I want to know when, why, how will we start seeing these sneakers come down in price point yeah. so that we can consume them? I want to buy Triple B gear. I want to buy Triple B sneakers, but I'm not spending $4.95. When can I, a man of my economic stature, purchase uh, triple B's. Uh, so another funny note on these: these are 4.95 retail, unless again the sizes they they break up the price. So if you are a size 14 or a size 15, they're going to cost you 6.95. I don't know if that's because there's extra uh, leather, more material. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> you gotta you gotta make up that cost somehow. Listen, shout out to Lonzo Ball, shout out to Lavar Ball, uh, shout out to Manuel in the comments who says the comments. you guys are puppets. I guess that he means we're puppets for the Ball family, which that would 
be like an ideal life for me if I was secretly being paid <laughs> yes. by, by LeVar Ball. It, we, we do this for jokes, you know, it, it, or mostly in jest. I, I do uh, support LeVar Ball's endeavors to a point. I do think his antics can be a little bit over the top, but in jest, we like to bring these topics up. Uh, but we are in no way puppets for big bowler brand because, unfortunately, we are not on their payroll. But if they like to pay us or me, if I'll they like myself. to buy an ad, uh, we're happy to do some branded content. Yeah, absolutely. Again, all this for exciting future all this for of free. Company. <laughs> all right, Rich. Let's talk about actual sneakers, actual innovation from actual sneaker brands for a second. I if, take I take offense to that. If if you don't mind, um, last week Nike had their. Q4 2017 earnings call. These yep. things are very. This is uh, your specialty. In, industry insidery. You know, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a tall order to sit through the hour and a half or two hours of, of everyone on the Nike board or all these execs talking about their plans. But if you do, there are some interesting data points in there. One we want to pull out from here was Mark Parker, Nike CEO, President, Chairman. I don't know. He's got a million titles these days. Saying that they are prepping for what he called Hyper Adapt 2.0 and delivering new forms in in their adapt adaptive technology and at more accessible price points, that obviously being a, a big thing since the first shoe that you see here, the Nike Hyper Adapt 1.0 was a 7, 720. A grip. And the thing I'm interested to, uh, the next wave of Hyper Adapt stuff is to see how they can push it for for more performance oriented shoes. You know, yep. the Hyper Adapt 1.0, I, I love the silhouette. You know, Very I nice. think it's I think it's on the right side of chunky and techy and yep. brash, but it's not really uh, intended for any any particular Purpose. sport. You know, yeah. it's, it's not a running shoe, mm -hmm. it's not a basketball shoe. I, I think it was built as a training sneaker, which yeah. is wide broad, broad yeah. scope. Yeah, I, I think around the time, maybe maybe when you talked to Tiffany Beers uh, from Nike about it, she said that they did some wear testing yeah. for different sports, if I recall correctly. But it's clearly not. It's an all-purpose uh, type of. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to see a basketball shoe with this stuff, and I want to see a, a running shoe with this. Uh, uh, moving on to more very important sneakers and very important basketball sneaker related news. Clay Thompson's re signed uh, a deal with Anta. Anta has been outfitting him now for a couple years. Uh, he re signed with them to the tune of $80 million over 10 years. He's going to be wearing sneakers that look like this for, for 10, for 10 years. more years. That's, uh... for Listen, though. I mean, if we're being honest, and I'll speak for myself again, you give me $80 million, I'll rock whatever the hell you hand me. You know what I mean? And obviously, uh, this became a meme that spread all over the internet when he when they broke out his uh, Anta 1, and he seems so, so yeah, upset I by this. He, I think he even had an explanation about how he was traveling and he was tired. Tired, right, right. That he is, in fact, incredibly enthusiastic about those shoes, which I'm sure is your immediate re reaction anytime you I'm see sure. an Anta. I'm sure. Silhouette. A Chinese uh, apparel sportswear company investing $80 million into uh, an American athlete like this. We've never seen like that before. Right. We've seen Peak come through. We've seen Li Ning come through. We've seen Anta right, come Dwayne through. Right, Dwayne getting his own brand. Right. But we've never really heard of this type of huge long-term investment with a marquee player in the game. Klay Thompson is easily one of the best players in the in the NBA. He's a two-time champion, perennial all-star, one of the best shooters to ever play the game, great defensive player. This is a major move for a Chinese brand. Right. You know, when, when Nike throws this money at a basketball player, you know that they can sell sneakers in the U.S. and you have a decent amount of faith that they can sell sneakers around the world, yeah. maybe to a lesser extent. But I've never seen, we've never seen a Chinese brand really break through like yeah. that. Even even with Dwayne Wade, who, as, as I mentioned earlier, got his own sub-brand with, with Li Ning. They just never seem to really make a, a concerted effort in the U.S. You know, you could only get them in a couple stores. Yeah. And I feel like that's the same thing with Anta. But I guess they can sell sell enough pairs to people in China yeah, to make it I, worth eighty million dollars. I wonder. I, I, I guess to, to to question or to, to to piggyback on that, I wonder if they even care. Yeah. If I, they're going to make a splash in the American market, are they banking this eighty million and them being able to sell that many pairs of uh, Clay Thompson Antas in China? You know, I really don't know. Shout out to Nick DePaula who had that information first. Brendan, it is July. We're halfway through the year. Mm -hmm, just over. And there have been a lot of good sneakers uh, in 2017. You've been happy with what's come out so far? <sighs> yes. 
I've been very happy, actually. Uh, last, I last year felt like a little bit of a down yes, year to me, but I, I, I think there's some pretty good stuff this year, and uh, I I'm going to agree with you on that. The, again, the, what we're about to show you as uh, Soul Collector's top five is brought to you by the entire team at Soul Collector, all six of us strong. Shout out to Brennan, uh, who's here with me. We got Zach. We have B. Rich, we have Brendan Hero Williams, and Gerald Flores, the EIC, and myself, so that's all six of us. And we all came together to bring this, uh, bring this five together. But speaking for myself, there's a couple honorable mentions that aren't here today, and let's, I think we should just pick one. Me, one thing that's not here that I'd love to see here is the Air Max 97. That okay. was a huge okay. sneaker for me this year. Yes. The silver and the gold. Well done. The I rollout. Have... The rollout's been smart. Yeah. There's still energy around it. There's yes. still stuff coming. The timing. Yes. The timing was excellent. Yes. Is there something here that's not here? Or is there something that's not here that you would have put on this list? I mean, maybe maybe the big baller brand joints just oh, because they made so yes. much noise. You know, I think that, yes. that that is a goofy shoe, and that's a shoe that most humans should 100%. not wear. And I don't think anyone should spend the money on them. But I have to give them credit because it's been one of the more interesting stories. A hundred percent. Uh, in the past couple of years. 100%. The, if, if only we, had, we could get a pair. Yeah. Right. If we had a physical pair or if we knew that they really existed and weren't caught up in some kind of LeVar Ball matrix. Mm -hmm. Some, the, some the, pyramid scheme of investors. <laughs> the Zoe 2 would have 100% made our list. But let's start with our number five sneaker of the year so far. Just happens to be one of my favorite sneakers of the year, period. And that, Brendan Dunn, is? Adidas Yeezy. 350 Boost V2. This is the zebra colorway. Rich, is this the best Adidas Easy shoe yet? Okay, so I'm glad that you asked me that because before we came on the air, I went and I checked out our editor's picks and I read the comments and I picked this as a sneaker of the month, right? Mm -hmm. And in my little write-up, I mentioned that this is actually, in my personal humble opinion, the best, uh, the best Kanye West sneaker Period. Ever. Ever. That, that's a bold statement. It is a bold statement, but I'm going to say that. Okay. Right? And again, in my very humble opinion, and someone in the comments called me a Yeezy stan, and that uh, because I'm a Yeezy stan, I guess I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. First of all, I only own three pairs of Yeezys. I don't own any Nike Air Yeezys. Uh, not that they weren't good sneakers, I just don't own any. And I'm not a Yeezy stan like that at all in any way, shape, or form. I just think this is a really good sneaker. Period. By the way, if you do if you do disagree with us, if Let you us do know. think we're idiots, if you do think we got this all wrong, absolutely make your voice heard in the comments because we want to know what you guys think are the best sneakers to come out this year. Or, you know, if... if, if Where do you stand with this? Um, I have it pretty high up on the list of Kanye West sneakers in general. I guess yeah. it's it's not my favorite Adidas Yeezy boot. Okay. I still, I still think the the Moon Rock is the best of those. Good the 750, I, I kind of have come to appreciate less and less because yeah. I think it's hard to wear. Yeah. Um, I do think this is the best V2 colorway and probably the best thing Kanye West has done this year. Okay. I'm still excited about the Runner because that's more my oh, sure, speed. Sure. Sure. But uh, this is a very good shoe, and uh, I'm not mad at making this. Our, our number five shoe of the year to release so far. We yep. have some discrepancies, and we'll get to the argue. We'll get to the arguing about those. But uh, I think I think we did this a right, right job with this one. I, I, I personally think that, looking back on it, I probably because I, I think so highly of the sneaker, I would have had it higher in our top five. But this is a good sneaker to me. Again, like I said, a bold claim saying that this is his best sneaker ever. That's not. That does not. I guess that just includes Nike and Adidas because my Grail Kanye West sneaker is the college dropout. Bape. Okay. That sneaker to me is. Okay, you like this more than the Louis Vuitton stuff Woo. too? That's what I'm saying. So not the Louis Vuitton stuff and not the Bape stuff, talking strictly Nike Adidas. This gotcha. is my favorite Kanye West sneaker ever. Let us know your thoughts on that. And if you're watching this on YouTube, let us know in the comment section what your thoughts are on our top five and the sneaker. Okay, four, Rich, our, our fourth best yes. sneaker to release this year so far. Uh, a shoe that we actually don't have today, but we're, we're happy to talk about it is LeBron James's Nike Air Zoom Generation first game. Yep, the retro release. Um, look, LeBron James recently became a lifetime Nike athlete. Yep. He's been with Nike forever. Yep. We knew that, that a retro was coming. You know, yep. For the past couple years, there have been some stray samples to pop up here and there. Yep. And, and basically, the idea was that if Nike ever wanted to, you talk about recouping, wanted to recoup the amount of money that they paid LeBron James, it, it would have to involve this have to some, some amount of retros at some time. Yep. This is the first uh, retro pair they've they've released mm -hmm. and uh, you know ties back to his 
first game, although they call this the first game pair, but it's not it's actually, actually the, the pair. That, yeah, the first <laughs> home game yeah. pair. Um, yeah. a, a, a bulky shoe that I think I think stands the test of time. Oh yeah, yeah. I would I would say that this sneaker is a lot hotter than a lot of the actual LeBron stuff that came after. Right. It. Uh, Although I, of course when these first came out, they were on sale regularly. Oh, so hell a yeah. lot of people who weren't Absolutely. checking for them back then kind of scrambled around the retro stuff, this and the, and the wheat pair. Yeah. So definitely more celebrated this time around. I, I definitely agree with our team's assessment and having this in our top five of the year. A lot of a lot goes into picking these sneakers. It's not all about like looking swaggy and and and, f and flexing on the gram. This is a very important sneaker. Yeah, that it's, you alluded it's, to. it's a historic moment yeah. for Nike for them to kind of say this is how much we're behind LeBron James and you know everyone always wants to compare LeBron James to Michael Jordan. Can LeBron James's retro sneakers ever be Air Jordans on the retro end? No, no. God no. But this is a step toward that. Yeah. And this is a step toward that same model of, of drawing on the, the archive stuff and saying this was important. This, yeah. this matters. And this came on the heels of what you spoke about, LeBron signing that lifetime deal with Nike. And this is how we commemorate that. We're going back into the past to celebrate uh, his first game or his first home game. And it was a very, very, very important sneaker, which will lead to... Uh, Diddy, what you're saying, like the future of LeBron and his brand. Yeah. This is the start of it. So yeah. very important sneaker. Ironically, the past is the future. Yes, and the future is the past. Mm -hmm. Number three. This is, this probably, in your opinion, I'm going to assume is higher than three or? Yes. Okay, this is higher yes, than three. Yes, this is. So number three is the Nike Air Vapor Max Flyknit in no particular colorway. Which colorway do we have here? The gray joint. Uh, one, of, one of the many colorways I own. Yes. This, to me, uh, again, another sneaker Are you that... you disagree with me on this no. one, Rich? Uh, this, to me, again, is another sneaker that I absolutely think deserves a place on this list. I think three. Three is a little high for it, in my personal opinion, but mm -hmm. it's low for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, The I think this is just, I mean, again, the, the Air Max platform is so massively important for Nike, yeah. but... I think it's just been kind of boring for a while now. The retro oh, we'll stuff, for sure. the retro stuff is always there, but you know who cared about the Air Max 2015, the Air Max 2016, the Air Max 2017? Yep. And if Nike really believes in this technology so much and they they believe in pushing it forward, you better you better make sure that the new shoes coming out using the technology are actually interesting or yep. actually have some sort of storytelling around them or some way to make consumers, you know, invested in it. And I think that they did a great job with that, with the with the Vapor Max, you know, the first unveil at yep. the Innovation Summit last year, which I'm still I still want to see those colorways yeah. hit retail. There were some some really nice ones, but some crazy things. Yeah, yeah, we don't know what's happening with that, but I think I think Nike did a great job with the shoe. Yep. You know, the Calm de Garcon pairs Fire. are super nice. I still wish I had the black Clock pair coming up. Um, the clock collaboration. I'm not big on the clock colorway, but uh, uh, I think the Nike Vapor Max again is just an important shoe. Um, Mark Parker, Nike in general, have said multiple times that they're going to do more with this platform, so we can expect to see this tool, see this tooling quite a bit going forward. Yep. Um, and I can't wait. Yeah, I, I agree that this is a very, very, very important sneaker and important to the future, just like the AZG was uh, in the Cushing Revolution that Nike called it, right? Yep. Uh, so we have Vapor Max, React, and Zoom X. Is that the last one? Yeah. yeah so these are the next three technologies that are going to usher in a new era of Nike cushioning, uh, and Vapor Max is the lead for the Vapor Max tooling for this for this air unit. Yeah. I, I know. I'm excited mostly about the sneaker for the future of it. Yeah. This one is cool, but I do want to see it across categories. I do want to see where this tooling goes. Uh, in the future. Yeah. I like the Clot one. I, I know you're not a huge fan of the Clot one. Uh, but the Vapor Max is also on the off-white list. Is that right? Um, I think so. Yes, it's, yes. In that, it's in that 10 pack. Right. So there's... That there. one looks pretty nice. And Nike is putting a lot of energy into it with the collaborations and so on and so forth. So yes, to me, in my personal opinion, a very uh, important sneaker. This one thing. last note about it before we move on. I think it's just important that it's a totally new silhouette. Very important. I think the, the best Nike shoe last year, most people agree, was the Akron Impresto, which, which right. I think was a great shoe. And it obviously reworked the retro Presto silhouette, yeah. but it was, at the end of the day, an already existing shoe that, that they did a great job with, yeah. you know, Arielson at Akronim, but mm -hmm. was a retro shoe. So I'm, I'm always happy when we're talking about 
new sneakers on yeah, here absolutely. rather and, than retro. And stuff. just to make uh, make this point clear, we're not talking about this colorway of the Vapor Max. Right, just the shoe in general. The line itself, the Air Vapor Max. So it could be anything from the Fire Be True ones with that gradient package Quite good. to the gray, to the OG, uh, to the clot, anything. Just the Air Vapor Max on its own is our number three. So to recount, we had the Zebra Yeezy at five, the Imaginary AZG at four, and the Nike Air Vapor Max Line it at three. Rich, let's talk to him about number two. Let's do it. What do we have here? Just to get some, some space. We have a brand new signature basketball sneaker for... These are good, man. For Paul George. These are good. Who is going to have to change the colorways of his sneaker for next year? Nike has to change the colorways of the sneaker for next year because he is the newest member. Last I checked, I don't know if Woj dropped any more bombs of the Oklahoma City Thunder. So the Nike PG1, again, not this colorway, but the line itself. You know, I, when we were putting this list together, I didn't see where this fit, and I definitely think it's 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 high but I understand why it's here. In, in, in my personal opinion, it's probably the best signature sneaker to drop this year. Yeah. I'll, so I'll so with that with being that. said, it deserves a spot here. I think Nike and the designer Tony Hardman hit, hit all the right uh, marks with this one. You know, it's affordable in, yes. in an era when, when they needed to make their basketball shoes more affordable. I think most pairs is at 110 or yes, 120, 110. That they, 110 that yep. they retail for. 120 for the Kyrie. Uh, uh, note, this is uh, a uh, friends and family only colorway. Shout out to our, our dear friend Russ Bankson, yep. who let us borrow this uh, 2K edition. Yep. Um, <laughs> it doesn't look too teched out. You know, I think a lot of people were kind of getting sick of the era when, when Nike kept building basketball shoes up and up and up. And we, we spoke about that before. And I think this takes things in the right direction yes. and just looks, I mean, look, we all know it's, it's, that so many of these basketball shoes aren't actually used for basketball. Yes. That being the case, maybe they should, maybe they should look that way sometimes. And you know, in an interview we had with Paul George, he kind of talked about how he wanted his shoe to be a little bit more casual, and that's reflected in a lot of the material choices. You yep. know, you'll see suede on there, you'll see leather on there. Which Textures, That's just colors. like a cool thing, you know, yep. leather on a basketball sneaker yep. in 2017. I, and the Never low heard. the low cut, I think it's just a great shoe all around. Yeah, I think it's a really good-looking sneaker. I think what prevented me from accepting the sneaker was, I guess... And I don't want to. I don't want to like put him down in any way because I think Paul George is an amazing player. Mm -hmm. It was the timing of this sneaker with right. respect to his career. Paul George has been hooping for very many years. Mm -hmm. When they gave him this sneaker, he was coming off of a horrific injury right. where we didn't know if he would ever even hoop again. He came back hard and he was, you know, buzz. and he was playing at uh, an, 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 an elite level. Um, and now, like I said, he's going to be playing in OKC, which is another great market for basketball. So. Even though the timing was curious in the beginning, it makes a lot of sense now, having seen what yeah. where we are now. I think the plan was, too, for them to originally come out earlier, earlier. Yeah. is what we learned in our interview with, with uh, George and the designer of the shoe, is that uh, the, the injury obviously derailed that yeah. because you can't really have that come out while he's uh, not playing. So. Yeah. They definitely I, had to sit on it for a minute. I think it deserves a spot here being the best basketball signature sneaker, in my opinion at least, of the year. And a lot of times, uh, like the first signature sneaker for a basketball sneaker for a basketball player is not that great because okay. the designer and the athlete don't have a chance to link up and kind of go because they're usually getting drafted and mm -hmm, you know going through mm -hmm. a lot of things. They don't get to link up and discuss the details too much. But this is actually a good this first signature great. sneaker. It's, yeah, they did a great job. With so this. it sets a high bar for the PG2 that uh, Paul George will be rocking in OKC next year. I'm interested to see if they continue to go down this lane where it's kind of the anti-basketball basketball sneaker yeah. in that range. This colorway is fire, too. I've never seen this one in hand. I think that might be the best one other than the uh, the shining one that we have up That was the back a good one, us. too. That was a good one, too. Fire sneaker. Shout out to Paul George and shout out to Nike for dropping a banger. All right, Rich. I think this is the one we probably disagree on the most. Really? I think so. Wow. I'm upset about this one. Really? All right. This is our, as the sole collector, again, we, we've stated this a couple times. We all voted on these together. Collective. We kind of we averaged out our votes between the six people who work on Soul Collector. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the best sneaker of the year so far. I'm going to yes. do the scare quotes on that because, like I said, I don't agree with our assessment, but, but we can let the commenters decide how we did. I guess enough people on the team did agree. Yes, right? this is true. Yeah. This is true. I trust, your, I trust your judgment, Rich. And it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is my personal pair. I don't know if I've ever opened the box, really. Wow. We're uh, unboxing, unboxing. The, the virgin unboxing of the cause. The cause. 
was Jordan. Air Jordan 4. A sneaker that everybody has an opinion about. Whether or not you like them is another question entirely. I'm, I'm surprised. For Can you we take to the cardboard me? out no, of there? Or you want me to leave the cardboard yeah. in? Yeah. I'm surprised. Put them on eBay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kyle, I see. You. I'm surprised that you. Well, let's first talk about the sneaker. First talk of to all, me, Rich. talk about a the collaboration sneaker. between my favorite, and this is way before Cause even really came into the sneaker space. He was writing in New York, New Jersey for for many years as a graffiti writer. Um, my favorite street artist turned high brow artist of all time cause and the Jordan brand I said when it first dropped that I was low on it because I expected a lot more from cause and Jordan mm -hmm. especially cause himself because he usually does you know a lot more vibrant colorful uh, mm -hmm. takes on his artwork um, but this but. sneaker to me is the combination of two of my favorite things of all time and that is an Air Jordan and cause and in my opinion, the best sneaker of the year so far. Brendan, you disagree. Why, why do you disagree? Well, do you, do you think that it belongs in the top five at all? Um, I think it belongs in the top five okay. in terms of the magnitude. I mean, when we vote on these things, it's always difficult to separate our personal opinions versus how important we think the Absolutely. shoe is. And I think there's a balance somewhere in there. Is this an important shoe? Absolutely. Yes. Anyone who tried to get a pair, knows that yes but is it a bit underwhelming yes i think so yes. i mean i think i mean suede in general not your thing is always a turn off for me yeah. i think the you know the graphics on the upper are kind of hard to make out it just didn't make a lot of sense in terms of the flavor Understood. of the whole thing you know what Understood. i mean and also which is my beef with it yeah 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 and also not you know not to not no shots at cause or whatever but hearing him talk about the shoe at the brooklyn museum and kind of during the rollout he just didn't seem super passionate about the project sure. and to me you know obviously if you if, if jordan brand approaches you about doing a shoe and and you sign up to do it you know i'm not mad at that because yeah. that's such a huge opportunity but yeah. And you don't have to be a gigantic sneakerhead to do these sort of projects, but he just didn't seem particularly... Which he's not, and he right, admitted and he that. Admitted that yeah. which, is, which is good. Yeah. But he just didn't seem particularly enthused about it, and, and to me, that kind of detracts from the overall design. I do have a pair. I don't know if I'll be wearing them. I just... I mean... And, and again, like, the whole... It, it's cool that Kaz and Jordan did a shoot together, but in 2017, it's a lot less cool. Okay. It's a lot less cool in 2017. Kaz and Nike were doing stuff years ago that I think is better than this. Which I, I have those, I have those too. But I'm a, I'm a huge Coast fan. But I think a lot of people don't have that insider uh, angle that you have, that because mm -hmm. they weren't at the Brooklyn Museum, so they're just kind of taking it at face value. But I understand your perspective on it. I was underwhelmed. I think few people have the enlightened perspective that I do on. <laughs> yes, many absolutely. Things. You're like the Sigmund Freud of sneaker culture. Uh, I think that uh, it was underwhelming. I'm going to say that. I'm going to repeat what I said in yeah. our early full size run. I'm not saying like now that I have this thing, you're like, damn, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It's not, yeah. but I, I think, think the jacket is better. Oh, but that jacket is fire. But I do believe it's important. Even though you're saying that in 2017, how important is it? Right. I think it's important. And this is why I think it's important, right? Jordan is undoubtedly having a tough year, right? In terms of retros hype? going on okay, sale. Okay. Things sticking on shelves. Okay. This this was not happening three years ago, right? It was really tough to buy a retro Jordan three years ago. Now you can cop a, a retro Jordan easily every Saturday. So this was important, and it, it sounds crazy to say this, to bring buzz back mm. to the Jordan brand. I mean, I can see that. I think I think. You know, and I think this is what you're talking about, but definitely in terms of hype, they need a little help. Sales, yes. obviously, they're always there. We're not trying to yes. say that Jordan hype. brand hype. sales in are our, low, In but our space. Yeah, it, it, it's exciting projects, yes. things that things that really move the needle. I I understand that. I, st I still think it's too high, but I'm not mad at anyone who is, uh, who is coveting them. Or I am mad at anyone who's paying $1,500 for a pair at Stadium Goods or Flight Club. I <laughs> can't possibly advise that you do that. In your unless it's my pair. In your opinion. In which case, talk to me. Cause for... Or the soon to be maybe who knows released off white one. I like the off white one better than close better than that. You know, okay. I th I, tr I trust Virgil more because I, you know he's genuinely into that stuff and yeah. it just seems like a more thought out project. I'm not big on off white, but I I, I like that shoe over this shoe. Okay, so the off white uh, Jordan one would make your potentially make your sneaker of the year top. 10 list maybe. Yeah, it, it'd probably be in maybe the top there. 10. Yeah, especially if he sends me a pair with my name across the <laughs> midsole. Brendan. No, what would you? What would your? What would um, your? Hmm. What moniker would I want on yeah. the midsole? 
I don't know. Think about it. I, I trust Virgil to uh, get it right. To flip it. So let's yeah. recount here. We have going from five to one again. Our, our best sneakers of the year so far as decided by the Soul Collector staff. To the staff. good people at Soul Collector. We have. Again, tell us if we, tell us if we fuck this up. Yeah. We're happy to hear what you think. The Zebra Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 was our number five sneaker of the year so far. Do remember that there's a lot of sneakers to be uh, to be released, and this might change dramatically. Our number four sneaker of the year is not with us here today, but that was the first game Air Zoom Generation Retro. Very, very important sneaker mm -hmm. for Nike and LeBron James. Our number three sneaker of the year is the Nike Air Vapor Max Flyknit. Not in this colorway, just the sneaker as a whole, the line as a whole, and how important it is to Nike mm -hmm. and their cushioning revolution. Our number two sneaker of the year was the Nike PG1, Paul George's first signature sneaker with Nike basketball. Again, just based off the sheer it's a good looking sneaker yes but based off of how important it is as yep. well and our number one sneaker of the year which brendan is extremely unhappy about i'm upset <laughs> the air jordan 4 retro by cause which to me again it's a good looking sneaker yes the friends and family pair is better the fire. black pair is better it's fire but this is a very important sneaker uh to me so we can we can agree on that if you were to choose your own number one, and it's not this. What is it? I think it's the Vapor Max. I, I know. That's your number one. Listen, listen, listen. Damn. I know. I know. I'm. You are a Vapor Max. You're like. You're like a Vapor Max stand. Uh. You can say it. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I know I'm higher on that shoe the most, yeah. but to me, that's the most exciting. That's the most interesting. That's the best looking shoe this year. Yeah, an honorable mention, of course, to the. Triple B Zo 2. LeVar Ball, if you had given us a Zo 2, it could be here yeah, right it's all, now. That's all you had to It do. could have been number one. We're only giving it an honorable mention because it's vaporware at this point. But if you were to give it to us, who knows? Do you like the Zo 2 better than the Cause 4? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trap. Brendan Dunn, there are several sneakers dropping this weekend. Let me run them down for you here. Rich, please do let us know. Thursday, off the top of my head, the Scotty Pippen Nike Air More Uptempo PE is dropping. It's a Bulls colorway. Uh, retail price is 160 This sneaker is, is cool to me. And it's very different from any Air More Uptempo that has ever released before because it has Scottie Pippen's logo on the heel, which Nike has never done. Uh, another big one on Thursday. Kevin Hart is linking back up with Nike Training for his second signature sneaker. It's mm -hmm. the Nike Free Train Virtue Hustle Heart. I'm surprised we haven't heard more about this shoe. I'm very surprised. There's not been a big rollout. I had rollout. to dig for it one, on yeah. Nike. I had to dig for it on Nike.com. Two flavors dropping. The black flavor is a night pair inspired by working out at night and the gray flavor is the day pair inspired by working out during the day release date is 76 uh, retail price 130 new balance 574 sport pack in collaboration with ronnie five and dsm we, we were talking about this is yes. the, this, this is, is, is the pack. most exciting new balance collaboration in a while salute to ronnie he yeah. did his thing with this these. is a good ass pack i am not usually high on kith collaborations mm -hmm. um and New Balance is having a little bit of a bad year for me, mm -hmm. but this pack is very, very good. Very nicely executed. Three colorways, a gray colorway, which is inspired by New Balance's iconic gray palette. You know, everyone, when you think of New Balance, think about gray, gray New Balances. Of course. Uh, the blue pair is inspired by another classic New Balance colorway and Ronnie Feig's favorite colorway uh, himself. And the triple black pair is just DSM's palette. You know, DSM, CDG, they always do like triple back jump offs. Yep, yep. Um, so that is dropping on Friday at Kith, retail price 180 each. And then the ends, uh, New Balance logos come off and there are 28 different executions to replace the end. <laughs> 28? 28. 28 ends in that box. Wow. According to Ronnie Feig himself. Uh, if you want to sell me your extra ends, let's talk. <laughs> Brendan's collecting ends. Yeah. That's Friday, Kith NYC and Kith locations. Moving on to Saturday, Jordan is bringing back their super ass pricey Jordans. Ooh, this is a triple great. black Air Jordan 5 premium. Release date is 7.8. Retail price is $400. No, thank you. It's a lot of money for a retro sneaker, man. 
A lot of money. I'll pass on that one. Uh, the Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG K54 is dropping this weekend. I, I like this shoe. Very good shoe. Very, very limited, are especially going to Paris? here in the U.S. Are they, are they releasing in the U.S.? Or are we yes. flying to Paris for these, Rich? No, they're are releasing Are we still going to Paris? Oh, you want to go to Paris? Let's talk. <laughs> so collectors in Paris. Uh, very limited here in the U.S. Only a handful of spots are getting them. If you're in New York, a couple of the House of Hoops locations will be getting them and potentially some other locations out west, but very, very limited. We wish you luck. A little bit more or a little bit less limited, a little bit more available overseas, but still going to be a pain in the ass to get. And last but not least, the Adidas EQT Support 9317 Boost is borrowing from the Adidas NMD and bringing that glitch camo prime knit mm. upper to it. Listen, you might not like I, these. I don't need these. I might not like these, but the kids these. love these things, man. Kids love Boost. The kids love Boost. Uh, the NMD uh, like glitch camo prime knit thing always sells out. These sneakers are gonna. I went on to Adidas.com to, to do some research today, and the 9317 GR colorways, just like the black, white, or whatever, mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. Gone. Only a couple pairs left. So, this is another boost banger Kids from love Adidas. Boost. Kids love boost, and I'm, I'm here for it. Brandon, that brings us to the end of our show. An amazing show, if I do say so myself. Um, yeah, uh, I think amazing is the right word to describe it. Uh, before we get out of here, we do want to remind you guys to subscribe to Soul Collector on YouTube. We're there. Soul Collector is back in full effect in the video form. It oh, was yeah. dormant. The, the, the channel was dormant for a while, but now we have full size run. We have release roundup. We have a couple things in the works, which I will not speak on, but they will Just be coming your way soon. So hit up Soul Collector on YouTube and subscribe. Do remember, let us know in the comments, wherever you're watching this, what do you think about our top five? We could have been wrong. Yeah. Feel free to give we're, us your own personal top five. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're most likely wrong, uh, according to your eyes, because people hate whatever the hell we did anyway. Am I right? Such is life. I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn from Soul Collector. Till next time, y'all. Peace.